This is Let's Talk Business with your hosts, Mark Ebinger and Genevieve Sims. Now, here's Mark. Welcome to Let's Talk Business, the show that highlights entrepreneurs to learn more about their vision, goals, and marketing strategy. Coming up on the show today, we're going to talk with Sonny Melendrez, a very well-known radio personality inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's list of top 100 radio personalities of all time, a member of the Texas and Radio Hall of Fame, Grammy nominee for producing a children's version of We Are the World, and a well-known motivational keynote speaker and TV host. Sonny, welcome to the show. Mark, thank you. Nice to be here. I'm super excited. You guys are excited. Very too. excited. They look excited. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> Monday. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm your host, Mark Evinger, the owner of Kruka's Virtual Staffing, a company that specializes in hiring virtual assistants from outside the United States. And I'm your co-host, Genevieve Sims, with the Evolve Firm, where we help entrepreneurs evolve to elevate. And I'm Kian Frith, also a co-host, and I am the CEO of KV Impact Consulting, CFO Consultants, and Cyber Specialists. Quick reminder to follow the Let's Talk Business podcast on all major podcast platforms and social media where you can catch video versions of the show. You can get it to everything easily from our website at satalkradio.com. If you're going to be in the San Antonio area on Thursday, May 16th, be sure to join us at the next Let's Talk Business Mega Mixer. We're expecting 150 local businesses and entrepreneurs on site to mix, mingle, and connect with each other to do more business. You can get all the information from our website at satalkradio.com. All right, Sonny, so I'm super curious of your background. Uh, we'll probably get into various parts of that, but uh, how did you get into radio to begin with? What's that story where you go from, I don't know, being a kid to yeah. being on the radio? Well, you know, um, I've been behind a microphone in front of a camera and on stage since I was, uh, actually, since I was a teenager. Uh, but really, it all started with this idea that I had, I had three dreams. I, I tell people that my father built a dream machine for my brother and me when I was in my, uh, I guess, I'm 11 years old and uh, in our backyard. If you saw it, you'd say it was a tree house. But for me especially, it was a dream machine because every night as the stars began to twinkle across the, the big Texas sky, I would go up there and dream about who I would be, what I would do, places I would go, people I would meet, the things I would do. And I, I realized that, uh, that there was a, a big world out there, and I watched it through television, and I listened to it through radio. So my first dream was that I was going to be on the radio. I was going to be that person talking and making people laugh and playing music and having a great time on the radio. My second dream was when I watched the Mickey Mouse Club on television. I, I, I wanted to be a, wa a part of the Walt Disney World. So I knew that one day I would be having that fun with, with, those, with those people. And the third one happened quite by accident. See, I found out at a very early age that I had a uncanny ability to mimic voices that I heard. In fact, by the, the end of this podcast, I'll, I can impersonate you guys. Yes. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I want to hear that. that. Yeah. <laughs> you start yeah. with Mark first. There you go. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, and so one day I was watching my favorite cartoon show, which was Yogi Bear. And I would try to do Yogi Bear, and I tried to do a little boo-boo. And Yogi, of course, had that bigger-than-life persona. Hey, 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 I'm Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear. And his little friend Boo-Boo would say, Yogi, Yogi, we're going to get in trouble with a ranger. We bought a thing, little boo-boo. So I was uh -huh. doing that at 11 Very years good. old. Very right. good. Very good. Well, there was this little duck that was in the uh, one of the episodes who thought that Yogi was his mother. He would say, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? And I was enthralled with this voice. And I turned off the TV. I said, I'm going to learn to do that voice. And I had a little recorder. And I started out, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. And I, I did it for my mom. I'd say, Mom, listen, Mr. Bear. <laughs> and my mom, she's this tall. She says, Ah, mijo parece box Bonnie, que bueno. <laughs> she, she didn't know. But she always encouraged me. And one day, about maybe six weeks after I'd gotten a sore throat and everything, trying it out every day, out of my little 11 year old mouth came, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my baba? I don't have a baba. I'm just a poor little orphan. I actually I remember. remember that voice. Yes. Yeah, that was a little yakky doodle. 
Oh my gosh! Nice. So, I can't even picture the character, but I, I know yeah. that voice. You know the voice. So uh-huh. that was kind of the beginning of these dreams that I had, and an interesting thing that happened is that I did not wait to have to grow up to do these things. With radio, with my recorder, I saw it as a a way to have my own radio show. So I had a, a record player. And a recorder, and by the way, if you're a millennial, you're watching this, or younger, and you don't know, you look up these things that I mentioned. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I had this little recorder, and I re- recorded these little five-minute shows. And I would play them for my friends on the phone, and we didn't exactly have a phone because we didn't live in a house or an apartment. We lived in the back of my dad's barbershop. He partitioned this little uh, barbershop. It was actually half of a of an address. Uh, our address was 908 and a half Nolan Street in a little oh. strip center that still exists on the east side of San Antonio. And um, so the, the pay phone was inside the barbershop. And at night, my dad would give me three dimes and I would go into the barbershop, sit in the chair of the shoe shine stand next to the pay phone on the wall and dial one friend at a time and play my little productions. <laughs> wow. Cool. I was podcasting. Wow, <laughs> yes. Yes. probably yeah. the Pioneer. first podcast. Yeah, you think uh, it's San Antonio. Exactly. <laughs> and so I would I would do these things. So this is what's incredible. Your subconscious doesn't know where it was that you did whatever it or care. Where it was, whether you did it in front of a thousand people or you're broadcasting in a full blown radio station, all it knows is that you've got that experience. So by the time I got to college and started my radio career at the college station, San Antonio College, it was amazing because I already had like six years of of this, uh, you know, this experience. So that was the beginning of my my radio career, and it went on from there. The the television came when I got to Los Angeles, and uh, in Los Angeles, again, uh, I heard that there was going to be a, uh, a channel called the Disney Channel. Disney was going to have its own channel. And again, I didn't wait to have to have my agent call me and say, you know, you've got an audition for a host or whatever. I created a show and I said, get me in front of the suits, the people who make the decisions. And I can remember, <laughs> as it was yesterday, I'm driving my, my car into the, the Buena Vista Studios, where, uh, of course, all of the production is done for, for Disney, it was then. And I'm in front of the suits, and they look at the, the, the uh, they have people coming all day long with pitching all these different ideas. And say, they look at, the, uh, at the, 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 the description, they say, Sonny Melendrez. Okay, what do you got? And so I go right into my whole thing about uh, Saturday in the park. We're going to go in the parks all over across the country. I have 20 kids with me. The guest stars will be in different parts of the park. And I'm going through all these gyrations. And at one point, Mark, I see this um, woman. In the, she's the three men and, and a woman. And she looks over at one of the guys and goes, mm. and I think to myself, oh, great. They're making fun of me. But then after I got through... I expected them to say, don't call us, we'll call you. Instead, they said, this is a nice idea. It's not what we're looking for, but with your enthusiasm, we think you'd be perfect (laughs) for our children's show called You and Me, Kid. Would you be interested? Oh, Let me check. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So that was kind of the the, the thumbnail, the the long version, uh, long story short, of uh, how I got into these, these different businesses. Oh, excellent. Wow. Excellent yeah. lead up. So I'm um, challenges along the way, right? Because there's bound to be naysayers, right? Oh, dude, you're not going to this. You're not going to, you had to have oh, yeah. some of that as oh, yeah. you went along. How did you deal with that uh, to keep your enthusiasm? Was it just self-belief? Was it the people you had around you? What was that motivation kept you going through those challenges? Yeah, it's a great question. It's what I saw. I saw something big. And there was nothing going to keep me from that. And that's another, you know, kind of a, a dynamic of business is sometimes, if not all the time, your people that you work with, the people that we'll meet, they don't see it the way you do. Oh, yeah, In fact, absolutely. your own spouse won't see what mm-hmm. you're looking at. But then when you get there, it's like, wow, 
that's unbelievable. Uh, so that was what really kept me going. It's interesting because when I got to Los Angeles, um, two people that I wanted to meet uh, were were people that I, I everybody told me that I, I wouldn't be able to meet them. They're too busy or, or whatever. You won't be able to get to, to talk to them. And one of them was somebody who had created his own path. He did not wait to be hired as a host. He created his own show called American Bandstand. Oh. And I'm talking about Rings Dick Clark. Yeah. yeah. And so I was fascinated with him because he did everything. He, he did the producing. He did the hosting. Literally everything. And so not only did I get to talk to him, but when I did have a like a 30-minute meeting with him, it lasted for hours. And I ended up working with him on the, uh, on the American Music Awards. But just fascinating. And the other part of it is this. The people that you aspire to meet, to be like, to learn from, when they are as kind as you mm. thought they would be yeah. and as kind as you hoped you would be, it's just a, a big bonus. And he certainly was that. The other person I wanted to meet was a person also who had his own show, had created it, and turned it into this major, mega show. Uh, in fact, he broadcast to 500 radio stations around the world every week for three hours on American, uh, on the, uh, I should say American, not American Bandstand, but American Top 40. Yeah. And that was, of course, Casey Kasem. And he had that great signature voice. Hi, this is Casey Kasem, counting down the hits in all the land on American Top 40. And we got to be good friends. He started listening to my show. And within six weeks, Mark, Genevieve, and Kean, he called me back and said, I'm going on vacation. Would you consider sitting in for me? Wow. No way. So I wow. sat behind that iconic microphone and broadcast to 500 radio stations around the world. Okay, when was that? I'd that like was to... 1976. Okay. Yeah. In what month do you remember? Uh, I want to say it was July because they ran it recently on, uh, on Sirius XM. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I'm sure I could find it on YouTube yeah, you somewhere can. or something. In fact, if you, if you, uh, the, uh, the, the first intro is on... Um, is on um, uh, sound, uh, what's it called? Uh, anyway, if you just Google Sonny Melendra's American Top 40, you'll be able to, oh, to hear the, super the first cool. intro Looking I did. Looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. pretty amazing. <laughs> well, when it comes to your journey, I mean, I love how you are very intentional with everything, who you wanted to meet, where you wanted to position yes. yourself, and then having that mindset of, even knowing that you will get rejected or people will say no to you, that you kept going. And I think for a lot of our listeners out there, entrepreneurs, you know, their vision and their mind is so clear. But nobody, will el nobody else understands right. it, no matter how much they articulate it, because it's their vision. It's their passion. Sure. And so what, what advice would you give to them to keep going with the people that are going to say, you know what? Maybe not today. Today's not your day. You know, this idea is too big or your goal is just too out there. What advice would you give to our entrepreneurs out there right now who's building their dreams? Well, you've got to look at it as uh, not as a, a challenge, not as a naysayer, but as a hurdle. And, and the, the higher the hurdle, the higher you can go. And if you're going on this race, you're going to have those hurdles, but you can also be proud of having overcome them or having learned from them. That's the big thing. And Genevieve, you mentioned intentional. Mm -hmm. um, I found out, and, and this is how I got into the speaking business, about uh, t 20 years ago, I was asked to speak, and they, I said, well, what would you like me to speak about? I says, well, just you know, you're, tell people about, about your enthusiasm. And so that got me to thinking that in the past, all these different things, these hurdles and all these wonderful opportunities that I had experienced, all had one ingredient. And that ingredient was not only enthusiasm, but it was intentional enthusiasm. Again, I did not wait for something to happen. I always say that uh, sometimes uh, opportunity knocks, sometimes it taps on your window, and sometimes it's outside of your house. You've got to go out and flag it down. I love so that. So you've got to be yep. proactive. And so with that intentional enthusiasm, it's gotten me, gotten me to 
all of these different places. And I found, interestingly, I was just looking back recently, that most of these things happen within 60 days. It's amazing. From the moment I have an idea or see it, the, the, the wheels in motion go, get, into, get, get going, and all of a sudden these people show up. Maybe you've, you've experienced that in yep. your life. Yep. Where you, I mean, the, the evidence by the fact that Genevieve and, and Kian are both in, in your life, Mark, you know, they, they show up and here you are doing these things because of the vision that you had for this podcast, this show, this network, and, and all the other great things that you do for businesses. So I think that that intentional enthusiasm is what takes you to that next level. Yes. And, and you, you said, apart. you know, 60 days of it happening. I think once you're, you identify what you're going for, that vision is so clear that right. everything else around you becomes an opportunity. Exactly. And you start connecting the dots. Exactly. But once it's clear, right, it has to yeah. be clear. And then now every conversation from that point is intentional. Let, let me tell you a little story. You know, before we started here, you were mentioning uh, that I had done the, the children's version of We Are the World, Graded It. Um, that happened by accident. And again, these <laughs> wow. things will happen, these coincidences that you think are, but they happen for, for a reason. Um, I was I had a uh, afternoon radio show in Los Angeles, and it was around the time that "We Are the World" was the number one song around the world. And I woke up; it was about seven thirty in the morning. My clock radio went on, and I heard a child singing, "We Are the World, We Are the Children." And I thought to myself, "Oh, a children's version of We Are the World." Why didn't I think of that? And then, as I continued to wake up, I realized that. I was listening to the original song, and that was actually Michael Jackson singing his part. Oh. <laughs> so there was this wonderful gift that, that just kind of uh, came to be. So that afternoon, I shared it with my audience on the radio, and I said, are there any children or parents who would be wanting to be and get involved in the children's version of We Are the World? Well, you can imagine Southern California, I, had in, I was inundated with calls. So all of a sudden, every afternoon, there would be a new um, development. Uh, somebody else was involved. Somebody else was involved. All of a sudden, we had 1,500 kids who had wow. all auditioned. And out of that, we got 50. Then we had George Duke, famous uh, Grammy-winning producer. He produced the song, and he had brought in uh, Philip Bailey, uh, he had uh, Stephen Smith from Journey. He brought in these great heavyweights to do the, the track. And it was an amazing experience because we ended up in the studio and we recorded the whole thing. In fact, you, you can watch it uh, on my website. But we recorded the whole song with these 50 kids. And I, the whole time I'm thinking about the other 15, uh, 1,450 children who were not part of the recording. I said, what if we did the second half of the video at Griffith Park and we had all these kids? So we have this scene where you see a, a, a hilltop or a mountain and they're here, all these kids are coming across. And now you have 1,500 children and they're all singing, we are the world, we are the children. It, I mean, it is, I've seen it hundreds of times. In fact, they even showed a clip recently on, uh, on Netflix, there's a show called, uh, there's a, uh, a documentary called The Greatest Night in Pop. Which, I watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was a whole thing. I don't remember seeing the at, kids version. At the of very it, but, end, oh. where they show people all over the world singing it. Yeah. There's, a, there's like a clip. It's just a few seconds of that, uh, of, that of, the, of, our, of the children's version of We Are the World. Wow. But, and, and then uh, within uh, the next following year, we got word that it had been nominated for a Grammy. Wow. Wow. All because I misheard a voice, but then took it to the next step, the next step, the next step. You know, it's like, and I don't know if you have this in, in, the, uh, in the UK, but it's like the Little Rascals. We had a, a, a series here when we were kids called you know, the Argan Comedies. And just these kids that would all just pile into a, a car that they had made or whatever. And they would have these shows. And they'd make up all these different things. And that's what it was like. I'm on the air, I'm getting all these people in, involved, excited with my intentional enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and what happens? Magic. 
I, I kind of feel on a smaller scale, the uh, our mixer is that way because it's like that's what we do there. It was just a vision and it was intentional enthusiasm and not only before but also during the mixer, which is why I think it was so well received. Right. Definitely, definitely. Um, Sonny, I, I could sit and listen to you for hours <laughs> yeah. with the stories you're sharing. Um, I love your intentional enthusiasm. I love that phrase. I love the fact that you've had this vision. I like the fact that you you were a pioneer for for podcasting, <laughs> yes. um, which is just I invented uh, podcasting. Exactly. Yeah. Like, let's I mean, give him due credit. <laughs> should, definitely, we definitely. So well, well done for for inventing uh, podcasting. Yeah, awesome. Um, you you created a lot of good fortune for yourself with the way you've been intentional in your enthusiasm and the way that you've gone and chased things. Um, but I presume though you're sitting there today though, you know people who've helped you along that, that journey too. People who've been speaking into your life and guiding you. Do you want to maybe just talk a little bit about some people who've, who've guided you? Oh, absolutely. Coached you, mentored you? Absolutely. And you know, the, the greatest guidance we can get is the, the guidance that we also are able to give, and that is through our example. Uh, someone is always watching, no matter mm-hmm. where you are, no matter what you're doing. I don't care if you're five years old. If you've got a two-year-old, little brother, little sister watching you, that's influence. And that's someone who you look up to and somebody who can give you that, uh, that, that help. Um, to, uh, to answer your question, uh, a, a, some, a person that comes to mind is I, I mentioned the fact that I, I wanted to be the voice of cartoons. And so one day while I was on the radio in Los Angeles and I would do all these different voices on, on the air, I got a call from an agent who said, have you ever thought about doing cartoon work? I said, since I was a kid. He says, well, give me a sample of your work and let me see what I can do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so about two weeks later, he calls and says, okay, you've got your, your first job. I said, but I didn't audition. He says, they, they love your, your, uh, your tape and they, 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 they want to hire you. And I can remember driving, again, one, driving my car into the, the parking lot of the Hanna-Barbera Studios, the home of Yogi Bear, Boo Boo, oh, and that out. little duck. You talk about surreal. Yes. Uh-huh. And I wasn't there as a visitor. I wasn't there as, a, uh, as, as an intern. I was there to do voices with the original cast on the new season of The Jetsons. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. And you can imagine this. Uh-huh. I'm in this room, and I hear these voices, Jane, George, Little, little uh, Elroy, Judy, all these characters that I'd grown up listening to, they're there. Inside, I'm jumping up and down going, I can't <laughs> yes, believe this. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, outwardly, I'm very professional. Nice to meet you. I love your work, and this is great. <laughs> exactly. That's what we were doing this morning. Right. <laughs> yes, right. <yeah. laughs> but there was this one person that I, I, I it was incredible to, to meet him. Because he's really the greatest character voice artist of all time. And he did the voice of George Jetson's boss because George Jetson worked in the Spacely Sprocket Company. And that was Mel Blanc, the great wow. Mel Blanc. So to refresh your, your or to, to let you know, more, uh, Kian, Mel Blanc was the voice of Bugs Bunny Okay. Sylvester, Tweety, all uh-huh. of the Warner Brothers cartoons, wow. and many, many others. So in the breaks, I would start talking to him, and he began to mentor me and would teach me a lot of these wow. voices. You want to hear some? Yes. Yes, right. absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you know what's great about cartoons? <laughs> it brings out the child in all of us. Sure. Yep. I've never had an adult go, no, that's all right. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here's a... Elmer Fudd, oh. Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, and Foghorn Leghorn. Be very, very quiet. I'm looking for a Widow Gray Wabbit. And when I find a Wabbit, I'm going to tear him apart, whim from whim. Ha <laughs> What's up, Doc? Have you seen a Widow Gray Wabbit? Big eyes, yeah. Big teeth, yeah. Big smile, yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? Ooh, I thought I tore a putty tat. I did. I did tore a putty tat. <laughs> you bet you thought, putty tat. The putty tat with me. Wow, I'm the wildest. Rudeness. Tootness. Shootness. Yeah, shit up. 
There you go. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I'm sorry that. I spit on all of you. No. <laughs> oh, you See, that's no another thing that, that I learned about character voice artists is you don't hold back. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we tend to hold back. Don't hold back. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is your life. Oh man, that I, was phenomenal! I <laughs> love it. I love it. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to the influence and uh, the things you've been involved with, and, and that word influence is just hitting me. And the fact that we're in a world now where it's driven by influences. Yes. Good, bad, indifferent. Yeah. What, what's your kind of view on influences? Well, again, you know, uh, who would have known that way back when that. Today, everyone would have a TV show, a radio show, a newspaper. I mean, you've got everything. Mm. And, and it's unfortunate that you have a lot of people who use that influence in, in a, in, in a not-so-good way. And then you have others who do. You know, this whole thing with, with AI, um, there was a, uh, an article that I read recently, and I agree with it, is that uh, artificial intelligence is going to magnify what it is we do. And that could be good and it also can be bad. But I think that we strive to do what we do in a good way is what comes back to you and who you surround yourself with and the things that you're able to do. Yeah. And the other thing is that in doing so, you are now influencing the influencers who may not have that kind of a, of a foundation. And you can also bring them over to your side. I give you a, a short example of that. When uh, I was on the radio here in Los Angeles, here excuse me, here in, in San Antonio, uh, had a morning show, and I had a producer who was just out of college. He was on my on my staff, and his favorite phrase was "What's up with that?" He'd always go, mm -hmm. "What's up with that?" Yeah, what? And I saw an old man on there. What's up with that? And about a year after working with me in the studio hearing me talk to listeners both on and off the air. He was talking to someone, a uh, listener off the air and on the phone. He was saying, oh, well, bless your heart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, bless your heart. Well, thank you uh, for calling. He was doing me. Yeah. <laughs> that's and again, amazing. there's uh -huh. the influence, like and that's that. how we are able to, uh, to bring them over to our side. Yes, people wow. think that to have influence you have to be on stage or have a big audience nope. but like nope. you said your sibling yes the people around you right. are influenced with everything that you yeah. do and i think the big question is i mean you have it what are you going to do with it right exactly how are you continuing what are you cultivating around you uh, and that can be friendships it can be just you know your impact on your local community which you do a, a lot of there i'd like to get into uh, what you're doing here in san antonio as well because um, I know you're still active. So what are some of the projects or things you're involved with here in San Antonio? Well, one of the projects that I've, I've got is actually ongoing. In fact, it's we're now on 25-plus years, and that was something that, uh, that happened uh, again. Uh, it was a, a wonderful accolade, a gift, an honor. The city of San Antonio uh, named a community center uh, in my name on the west side, which is one wow. of the poorest areas of San Antonio. And this community center is really kind of like an oasis for, for kids uh, who don't have anything else, uh, you know, after school, summertime, et cetera. And so uh, the, uh, the idea that this existed has now brought me to the point where all throughout the last 25 years, I have strived to connect the haves with the have-nots. But there's a little difference. And that is to report back to the haves. So I'll uh, give you an example. Um, in the uh, around Thanksgiving, we feed 100 to 200 families, and we don't just feed them by giving them a meal. We actually give them a turkey or a ham and all the trimmings, so they can go home, cook it, have a memory for their family, and now it's it's even you know a, a bigger uh, endeavor. And so the people who donate for that, I'm able to not only uh, through social media do videos of the whole event and then show it back to them. Uh, we have a school here, and this is an unbelievable um, development that happened uh, 
over 20 years ago. It's an all-boys school, and uh, I got a call from two preschool teachers who said, we are teaching our, our children, these, these boys, to, uh, to give, having a spirit of giving during the holidays, during Christmas. And we'd like to have them get toys and give them to you so that you can take them to the children at the community center. And I said, oh, my goodness, that's great. So I go, I entertain these, these young boys. I have a, a character myself. He's a little duck, uh, a puppet. Aww. And his name is Bono Duck, and so we go, we entertain, oh. and uh, and these and to hear these, oh my goodness! What what does he sound like? Bono Duck? Yeah. Yes. He's he's ba- basically was based on on Yaki Doodle. Mm. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. okay. So when Bono talks, I don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> I'm just as entertained as you are. <laughs> so Bono, can you say hi to uh, to Kian and Genevieve and Mark? Oh, uh, where are they? They're right here. Oh, is that the lady with the with the with the flower in her hair? Yes. Does she grow it in her hair? <laughs> no, she does not grow it in her hair. I don't think it's a real flower. Why don't you tell people about about yourself? What do you want to say? Well, um, how about uh, your family? Uh, my mom. She's a stay-at-home mom. She cooks and cleans and never gets any help. Yeah. Well, <laughs> may, maybe you should help her. Uh, today. Yes, today. And what about your dad? Uh, he's happy that the stones are still together after all these years. Oh, he is. So he's into hard rock. What do you mean? You know, hard rock, rolling stones. No, bedrock, Flintstones. <laughs> there you go. That's, yeah. that's a little bit Love it. Good. Love it. That's, so I'm getting from that character that he's... He's thoughtful. He's insightful. He is. Right? He's he not is. necessarily boisterous. Yeah. No. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. And he, and he will, you know, it's almost like I'm channeling uh, my five-year-old self uh, and every other five-year-old I've ever met. And, uh, and I, even, I told my wife uh, this past weekend, we were having dinner at a restaurant, and a family came in with five little boys and a little girl. And I told her, I said, you know, there's something about children. I want to go connect with them. I want to, I mean, they're my people, you know. <laughs> and and, uh, and it's, isn't it interesting how, how children uh, sense friendliness? They oh, yeah. sense you're one of us, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it's, it's almost like, a, you know, it's, it's, it's in a, a sixth sense that they have. But there's a child in all of us, and that's what... Yeah. That's what keeps me going. And I'm sure that gives you a lot of material. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. You got to meet my daughter. My oh, yeah? My nine-year-old daughter. Oh, my she How says, old is she? She's nine years old. Oh, great. She acts like she's 16. And the things that she says yeah. is just, I actually have a note um, on my phone of all the things that she said in oh. the past because somewhere is just like, I can't believe that came out of yeah. your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's you know? great that you do that. That's wonderful. <laughs> and then sometimes I'll go back and it's like, age five, you said this. Age <laughs> six, you said this. I like that record. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. Uh, also, the power of a voice. Now, this mm. is a, it's a silly mm. one. Um, my, my wife has a Yorkshire Terrier. Yeah. Uh, and um, when, when I met her, she had it. We brought it over from England yeah. um, at great expense. Uh, I'm not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but this dog has... Um, She's taking on a voice. And she is a <laughs> sassy little Yorkshire Wait, the terrier. dog takes on a voice or your wife does a voice? I do the voice of the dog. Oh, you do the voice yeah. of the dog. I do yeah. the voice of the dog. You and know she's, what? Now, she's now a very, very sassy dog. Let, let me hear the voice. Yes. Yeah. What's her name? Because it's going to be Scottish. It better be. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what's the dog's name? The, do- the dog is called Sandy. Sandy, okay. But, but when, when like my wife Victoria comes in the door or she's doing things or she's eating stuff she shouldn't be, Sandy makes comments all the time. Yeah. And um, Victoria's like, hey, what's up with you today? Why, why, why are you so sass? <laughs> oh, mom, you're just so stupid. Like, for crying out loud, can you just sit down, please, mom? There's just enough of that. <laughs> and then Victoria goes to rubber and like, mom, can you just get away from me? Your breath stinks right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and and there's, that yeah. kind of stuff goes on. But it, we can have a whole dialogue for ages. Yeah. And, and Victoria's literally sitting looking at the dog and the dog's, Doing the talking, I'm sitting having a well of time. I can get away with murder. Exactly. Oh, yeah. talking, if you do. Talking exactly. on behalf of the dog. Ken, you but, hit but the nail on the head. But it's fun. Yes, it and, is. And, and actually, do you know what? There's times in the day, and I'm sure you see this, there's times in the day where there's stresses kicking off. Things are happening. 
and it's a great de-stressor. Mm -hmm. The dog just comes out with a comment, right, you right. Know? And it's just like, you just have a laugh. And, and I think one thing I'm hearing here today is you just bring humor into the world. Right. There's a massive infectious smile on your face and stories that just uh, relate to people. And you put a smile on someone's face, even if they're having a tough day. Yeah. You know? Well said. And well, I'm glad beautiful. you do that. Yeah, I've got two I dogs and I, I have voices I, mean, I can, I can really them. get into it at times. Um, uh, yeah. We'll do it as a separate thing sometime, maybe Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you, you and exactly. I, we'll, we'll I think a, that we'll you need to give yeah. that dog a Scottish accent, though. Absolutely. Because you can do Scottish, right? I, I, I can, and, and Irish, and, and Cornish, because um, I'd be from Cornwall, so I speak like a right proper Cornish boy when I have to. That would be <laughs> hilarious. Um, <laughs> but but uh, I lost my Cornish accent when I was um, ad adopted. But it will come out when I go and see my birth family back in Cornwall. Uh, my nan, she's 92. I hadn't seen her for 38 years because I was adopted. And my, my wife found them. Mm. Um, there's a story to that. It's pretty incredible. Um, but when I go down and see my nan, my nan's like, will you just speak proper, please? Honestly, it's just ridiculous. I don't have a clue what you're saying. <laughs> 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 Apparently, I sound too posh. Yeah. Posh. Uh, see, I learned so much from, from all of this. That's wonderful. <laughs> so let's talk about your, your book, which is on audio. Yes. Now, my first question is, are you doing voices on this as well? Oh, yeah. um, you have I, to listen to it to find out. Yeah. I, Don't I, give I talk away about it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're going to have to buy the book. No, no. Um, no there, there's, a, there's a lot of talk about this, this whole story. And I do close the book with one voice that uh, also says a lot about another part of this whole idea of intentional enthusiasm, and that's curiosity. And when you are curious like a child about anything, mm -hmm. uh, you're, able to, you're able to find out more about the world, about yourself, about life. And one of the people that uh, always was curious, and one of my favorite characters, was Lieutenant Columbo, uh, Peter Falk. Uh -huh. He always had that, ah, I don't want to bother anybody. My name is Lieutenant Colombo, and Mark, where were you in the night of July 3rd? Am I bothering you? You know, my wife listens to this show. She thinks you're the greatest. This is incredible. Am I bothering you? That was <laughs> yeah. spot on. Oh, thank you. Very, brilliant. very thank good. You. So inspiration for the book, and what can people find, or what can they expect when the they The book really is, is the story of my life, and that's really my, my first book. I'm working on a second that will be, be even bigger that will have all, not only all of these stories, but a lot of pictures that go along with all the people that, uh, that I've been involved with, I've met and worked with throughout my, my life. But uh, the, the book is a journey of this idea of living with enthusiasm. And, you know, the whole idea of intentional enthusiasm, there's three pillars I found. One of them, the first one is belief, belief in yourself. You've mm -hmm. got to believe in yourself and get that self-confidence. Secondly is what we've been talking about, and that is your vision. What it is you see for not only yourself, for others, for the future. And the third one, and this is the big one. This is the fuel for all the things that we do, and that is gratitude. Yes. When absolutely. you are Definitely. grateful for every moment, grateful for air conditioning, grateful for this beautiful <laughs> studio, grateful for these microphones, I mean, look at what we get to do mm -hmm. and where we get to do it and how we get to live in the city that we live in. I mean, there's just a million things to be grateful for every single moment. And when you have that gratitude, you really fuel all the other things that happen in your life. Because we are never happier than when we are in the service of others. That's, that's a great statement, but let me challenge that a little bit on tragedy. So we all experience tragedy. Right? We do. So can you give a, maybe an example? You don't have to get overly sp specific if you don't want to, but like having a tragedy come into your life and yet going through it, right? We don't avoid it because then we don't ever really process it. Sure. But going through it and then coming out on the other side even better than before the tragedy. Well, you know, um, tragedy can not only happen to you, but it can happen to people you know. And that's where comfort comes in. And when we comfort others through their tragedy and through their, their time, I always tell my wife, you know, when, when someone dies unexpectedly and, and they don't get over it ever or for years, 
Uh, all bets are off. Everybody has their own way of dealing with it, and they, it's, it's never lost. Uh, my, uh, my wife's, uh, her brother was a drummer for Reba McIntyre, and when her band crashed uh, into a mountainside in San Diego, uh, her brother was, was killed. And so it was devastating for, for her whole family, her mom and dad. In fact, her mom and dad uh, from St. Louis, and they were visiting with us when that happened. And it was just unbelievable. And this whole idea of, like you say, the, this tragedy that, that happens, it, it tends to bring people either closer together or it can tear them apart. In this case, it really brought people closer together. Uh, and as a result of that, I, I witnessed incredible stamina, comfort, um, you know, all these different emotions that, that we went through. But at the same time, we got through it. You know, there was, there was a way for us to, to get to that point. And healing takes time. And, and certainly with that time comes, you know, a strength. And when you come out of it, you're, you're stronger for it. But you also learn... And, uh, and really, the comfort of others is what it is the greatest gift that you can That's give. very true. I love that. Like one of the things, uh, one of the quotes I've heard that I, I keep at the forefront at all times, at any time you feel helpless, you find ways to be helpful. Mm. And I've carried that with me. Um, we just recently lost my mother-in-law um, in October, and it was absolutely devastating. I just finished speaking in New York, and as soon as I landed... Her heart stopped beating. Oh, my and goodness. And I got to say goodbye to her. I got to spend some time before I flew out, three days before that. So coming back, I was just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I honestly was supposed to be excited about this great speaking event in New York. I come home, and now I have to take care of this tragedy that happened. And my husband, you know, he was um, so close to his mom. And instead of just standing behind the scenes and just, you know, really trying to process it myself, I started going to action. Let me help plan the funeral. Let me go speak to them. I ended up decorating the entire funeral home, um, made all sorts of things. And at the same time, on the same week, I had two more funerals to go to. No. One right after the other. And the thing was, my friends that showed up to that to support our family at our first funeral asked me to go help them with theirs because they didn't have anybody to help set up or plan plan the funeral procession after. Mm. And so in my grief, in my tragedy, I found ways to be helpful, even though I didn't want to. I was exhausted. I was desperate to just crawl in a hole and just stay within myself. But as soon as those opportunities came, I said, I need to get out of myself and see how I can be helpful. And through that, it opened up other opportunities. And like you said, it brought people together, you know? So I love that you said that. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. That is an amazing story. Kian? I'm, I'm just thinking that you, I think you touched on something there that actually is really helpful for our listeners too. In the moments when they're, they're battling, they're struggling, um, it's, it's not easy sometimes being an entrepreneur. It's not easy in a startup situation. It's not easy three years, five years, 10 years down the line, you get hit with things. And, and there's a danger of withdrawing back into yourself and, and um, you know, bunker syndrome and, and not facing up to things. And actually what I love is you are intentionally going out to be helpful to others that helped you in that situation. And, and it didn't just help you, it helped others. And so coming back to what Sunny was saying, going out with that in, intentional enthusiasm, intentionality full stop can actually draw you out of what you're feeling as a business owner and actually help you to start being a blessing to others, which actually puts a smile back on your face. And so it becomes self-fulfilling, you know? And I think there's, there's too many times when business owners just look within and they need to look outward. You know, you need to change the way that they're viewing things. Um, be so much, so so helpful you know quite often my wife and I will have a conversation about the future and I'm a forever an optimist for me the cup is always half full um, I'm a go-getter my wife would be more of a pessimist and it could be same glass still half you know half amount of water but she's like it's, it's half empty you know and I think that there's something about looking outward and looking differently which would be so helpful mm -hmm. I, I love what you shared 
and having person. that attitude of gratitude. Yeah, throughout that is everything. so important. Definitely. That, that is some fuel there. Attitude of gratitude is fuel yeah. that you can create, and not only in yourself, but then also around you. It's because it's infectious right. Definitely. Oh, yeah. when you're really yeah. grateful. And it's honest, right? Um, obviously, Sonny, you're very uh, you're inspirational, you're motivational, um, and you do a lot of speaking. So if folks want to have you come and speak for them, what does that process look like? Well, if they'll go to my website, SonnyMelendrez.com. They'll see um, what I do, how I do it, video, testimonials, have contact information on there as, as well. And my, my signature speech is indeed uh, how to unleash the power of intentional enthusiasm. And I speak to a lot of uh, uh, conferences uh, where different uh, op- occupations, different kinds of uh, associations, and they're looking for not only uh, inspiration, but they're looking for ways to improve their their whole um, their life and their their enthusiasm for life, but I tend to bring out the child in the people in my audience, and I do it through not only humor these stories, but especially by by connecting with them on a level like we've connected here today, mm. and you can see these stories that that come out uh, when this happens. So it's a it's a joy for me. To, uh, to be a keynote speaker, either the opening speaker or either sometimes I close the entire conference. And it's, it's amazing how the, the feedback that I get from the people that I meet, sometimes even years later, is incredible because you don't know how you've touched someone's life. And when you get these emails, these letters, et cetera, it's, it's, it adds even more fuel to my gratitude. Love it. All right. Um, we're going to wrap up the main segment. We'll do a quick uh, after show for the folks on Patreon afterwards. But, uh, Sonny, I really appreciate you coming mm-hmm. in. I think we had a great Thank time. You. Got to know Thank a little bit of so nostalgia much. in there, like <laughs> yeah. some Yogi Bear <laughs> My and pleasure. Boo Bear. Thank you. And let me congratulate you on what you have done well, with this program. You know, uh, a lot of people uh, have uh, podcasts that, that don't last very long. The average podcast I read recently lasts about four episodes. Because as you know, it is a full-time endeavor. And the more you put into it, the better it gets. But to have 20,000 followers worldwide, to have people who are not only subscribing, showing up at your networking, I mean, it, it is a great feather in your cap, and I congratulate you. Well, thank you very much. That means a lot. Uh, so it's nice that he said it. Kian's never said it yet. but uh, <laughs> He'll, say it, He'll say it in a Scottish yeah. accent. Yeah, our next event's going to be awesome. I, I love to share that. I love to share the platform, share the stage. It always should be bigger than one person, in my opinion. So thank you for that, Sonny. I appreciate it. All right, as we wrap up the show, a quick reminder to check out our latest podcast and catch video versions of the show anytime by visiting our website at satalkradio.com. That's going to be it for this one. You guys have a great week. We'll see you on the next one. Good job, everybody. Good job. That was thank fun. You.